Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to use SolarWinds to copy files from your uh, ASA um, over to your PC. Now, the SolarWinds file looks like this when you copy it from our Angel system. Uh, double click that, and it just has that exe file. Now, just double click that, install it normal. Um, just go by the defaults, and when you have it, it should look like this. Now, when you run it, it looks like this, um, and you want to make sure that it's started. So, a couple things. One, if I click on File Configure, uh, my options are to start or stop the service. Obviously, I want it started. Um, by default, it's always in the system tray. And then here's where you can pick where it saves your files at. Now, we're going to make a new location for that. Um, on my C drive, we're going to do new folder. And we'll do ASA files. All right, so now back here, browse. and ASA files. So then that's how you can point it to wherever you save your stuff. Now, um, the bindings typically, um, it grabs the IP address from your PC and it binds to all addresses on this machine or you can just use custom. Typically, you don't have to touch these settings. Security, by default, it's open for everything, which is what we want for class. So make sure you can send and receive files and allow all IP addresses. So again, you shouldn't have to touch this. You should not have to touch this. The only thing you need to do is possibly change the direction where your files go. Um, and then start and stop the server. So the service is started. Now if it's stopped, it looks like this. Obviously, it, all the files go on the top. So the top is the newest one. And it should say stop down here. So we'll hit start again, start the service up, and hit OK. So now this is running. You can minimize it. I typically leave this open when I'm doing it, and that way I can look real quick because sometimes this can be finicky, um, and it'll stop on you, and you're like, oh, crap. All right, so let's connect to our ASA. All right, now I've got my Ethernet card plugged from my PC into port number one on the ASA because I'm using one of the older AOSA, or ASAs that was already set up by somebody um, and they have the inside WAN or VLAN uh, set up for port one. Um, they also had an IP address on there. If you don't know where things are, um, once you enable, you can just do um, a show interface and I'll make this a little bigger. So interface V1 LAN is down, which should be the, the first port, and then the outside, uh, and then your inside. So my inside is up, my line protocol is up. If for some reason uh, the port number where you plug this in, which again, you typically you want to plug in a 1, and you want to make sure that VLAN 100 um, has no shutdown on it. And I have to hit enter or spacebar a whole bunch of times to go through these. But you can see all the interfaces. You have to turn those on yourself. So, if if your inside VLAN or VLAN 100 is down, just do a config T interface VLAN 100 and no shutdown. And then exit and just do a show interface again and now that should be up. Now, scrolling back up here, again this was pre-configured by somebody else. Um, and in class, they sometimes aren't. I have weird IP addresses. So on this one, VLAN 100 right here um, already had an IP address. It has 192.168.2.9. So somebody has already assigned that VLAN an IP address. Um, again, if you need to assign your own IP address, when you're in it down here, after you do no shutdown, you can just do IP address space and then put in the IP address and the subnet mask. Um, so if your VLAN doesn't have the IP address, put one on there. So mine was already pre-configured with this. So now you have to go to your network card. And make sure that you have something on the same subnet. This one was 192.168.2.9 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255. Um, so I just grabbed one. I grabbed 192.168.2.100, same subnet mask. Make sure you're okay. Again, here you have to match your NIC card to whatever this is. If they're on different networks, it's not going to work. There's no routing in here. Um, so now you see. All right, so make sure that your VLAN 100 is up. And once you're all done, again, it should look like this. Um, inside VLAN is up, 
line protocol is up because it detects your line, um, and then you have that IP address. Now to test things before you before you start this, um, ping yourself. So I'm going to ping 192.168.2.100, which is my PC. So I ping. So now the firewall is seeing my PC. So now you can copy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do show flash. And now I see the files in my flash. So if I wanted to copy the files from my flash over to my PC just to have them for safekeeping, I can do copy flash TFTP. Now it's going to say which file do you want to copy. I'm going to start with the top, ASA 722-k8.bin, which is the iOS file, and then the remote host. The remote host is 192.168.2.100, or the IP address of your PC and then what you want to name the file. I typically leave these file names the same um, and don't screw with them. Now some of them, <laughs> like this big one here, Secure Desktop ASA um, 3.1.1.29, blah, blah, I would rename that. Maybe, you know, Secure Desktop or ASA, you know, SD, something like that, whatever you want to do, because um, that's a lot of typing in. But anyway, so once this is here, um, I'm just going to leave it the same name, so you can just hit Enter. And hopefully... If that's working, let me close all these windows. Um, you can see how the file is coming over right now. And if I went back to Putty, you can see the files being moved over. Um, again, that was kind of a big one, so boom. So now if I go back to my PC and look under ASA files, there's the file. It's right there. Um, so that's how you can move files um, from your ASA over to your PC. Now, that was the flash drive or the flash memory. Let's say I want to copy my config. Again, in class, you know, there's there's three, or I'm sorry, there's two other ASA classes at this semester, and by the time you're reading this in two or three semesters from when I first made this, it could be five or six. So there could be, you know, five other groups playing with your ASA and having a bunch of different configs. So what you want to do is have a base config in there, um, and then make sure you save that. So again, it's just copy um, you, your run to TFTP, Hit enter. So name, we want to keep it running config. Um, your IP address of your PC. And then leave it the same IP address. And then, boom, it should copy over. So, again, go back to that file. And there's my running config. Now, later on, you know, you get this ASA again, and somebody's got a whole bunch of stupid configs on there. Now you just um, copy um, TFTP to run. See how we obviously we switched it up? So it's always copy from to. So we're going to copy from your PC to the running. And then again, it's going to ask you what's the name of the file. And we're going to call it, you know, the running config or something else. But obviously, and then we can move that back over. So that's how it would work if everything worked out correctly. Of course, if I answered the, the questions correctly, that would help. Obviously, they were looking for the name of the host. So copy TFTP to run. Obviously, it knows running, so it's 192.168.2.100. Um, source file name is running config. Destination, the running config. Boom. So now it's copying that running config over to your running config, and you're all set. So that's what you can do in class to kind of help you. Because, again, you're going to have a couple different people playing with the firewall. And the last thing you want to do is be setting up the basic config over and over and over again. Um, and this way you've got all your files saved locally. Make sure both you and your partner have a copy of these um, so that if, if you or your partner is not there, there's no, oh, we can't do our lab because we don't have our config. You get the idea. So make sure you've got that stuff done. Again, just brief recap. Make sure that your um, VLAN 100 is up. Make sure that you're plugged in, and then when you do a show interface, make sure that that VLAN 100 is showing up, line protocol up. Um, you want to have a straight through cable from one PC's NIC card into that port number. Now, on this router, it's, or ASA, it's one. Um, again, it's a straight through cable because these are switch ports. Um, when you're going NIC to switch port, whenever it's different um, interfaces, you want to have a straight through cable. If it's, if it's NIC to NIC, then you'd have a crossover cable, which is not the case here. So straight through cable, straight from your NIC card in here, you'll have to change your NIC card's IP address to match the network of the ASA's um, VLAN 100. Then you should be all set. All right, any questions?